Hi there, just the other day I was looking through my YouTube comments and one of you actually let me know that Amazon came out with a new software update just that day for all the Kindles and it was slowly rolling out. I did a quick Google search and I found out there were a lot of complaints about this new software update. People weren't liking it because it was a major change from before. After I heard about that, I ran to my bedroom, got my Kindle Oasis, and turned on airplane mode. I did this because it would prevent the update from coming to my Kindle. I did not want to sacrifice my Kindle Oasis. I treasure this thing. I read every single night. I did not want some random rogue software update ruining my Kindle. So I turned on airplane mode right away. But at the same time, I have my Kindle Paperwhite over here, which I use pretty much just for YouTube videos. So I got the software update. I downloaded it from the website and manually installed it right to the Kindle and I wanted to see what it was like firsthand. Now I've got to say after using the update myself for a full day now I have to say it's pretty good. So much so I've actually gone ahead and installed it on my Kindle Oasis. In today's video I want to explain all the new features and really talk about why people are concerned about it and why I think it's still worth installing and why I think it's actually a good update for your Kindle. Now there are really two main new features of this update and that's how I'll be dividing up this video. The first half of this video I'll be talking about the new home screen. In the second half of the video, I'll be talking about the new menus. Let's jump right into it. So this new home screen update is one of the biggest updates Amazon has pushed out to their Kindle. So it's very understandable that people are a bit concerned about it. But let me show you around a little bit. At the very top middle of the screen, you have this new arrow icon pointing downwards. This is actually a signal letting you know you can swipe down or even just tap on that arrow. Either way, we'll open up this new menu for your quick settings. All of these settings were there before, nothing has really changed. You have all the same things like brightness control. If you're on the Kindle Oasis, you'll see your warm light temperature control over here. You also have things like airplane mode. Nothing is really different. They just changed the way it looks. And I have to say, I actually really enjoy this new layout. The UI seems much better. It's more refreshed. I even think the font looks a little nicer. I'm not too sure what they changed about it, but it just looks more modern and sleek. I also really love that the date is showing up on the top left. Previously, all you saw was the time. So now you actually have the full date of today, which is very, very nice. And I also really love that you can swipe up and down to open up this tray. Now, next up below this arrow at the top of the screen, we have this giant search bar. Now, I wasn't expecting them to put a giant search bar here, but come to think of it, it actually makes quite a bit of sense. Before, you had a bunch of fixed buttons. You had your settings button, you had a Goodreads button, you had a store button, a back button and a home button and those are always fixed right there but you don't always use all of those buttons with the search bar it's actually a lot more functional you can search for a lot of different things on your kindle through the search bar just to give you an example you can search for books that you have on your kindle you can search for books you don't have in your kindle it'll automatically search the store for you but you can also do crazy things like searching for a phrase it'll search through all your books and find that phrase within a book if you have it there this is incredibly helpful if you're trying to find a phrase that you may have read several weeks or months ago and you know it's on your Kindle somewhere, you just type it in and you can search through all your books through this search bar. That's a very, very handy feature right on your home screen. Next to this search bar, you have the store icon. Nothing too crazy about the store. Everything looks pretty similar to before. But next to the store icon, you have these three dots. And these three dots are where you'll find other things like the Goodreads menu, your settings menu, and a few other things. But one notable thing that I want to call out is the web browser. Now, if you've watched my previous videos, you may have heard me talk about the experimental web browser. For the longest time, I'm talking several years now, every Kindle had an experimental web browser. Well now, in 2021, the experimental phase is over, we have the full version of the web browser. Now the web browser isn't the best thing in the world, I tried using it on my Paperwhite, it wasn't the best experience, but it was a bit better on my Kindle Oasis, I think it requires a bit more processing power, which a Kindle Oasis does have. You can do cool things like visit websites, it will take quite a while to load, don't expect yourself loading games or anything like that, but you can read articles on the Kindle through websites like blogs and other websites like that. Now the cool thing about this new web browser is you have the option to go to the browser settings, you clear cookies, clear history, disable JavaScript, make the browser as fast as possible. But one feature I really love is the new version of the article mode. If you open up an article on the web browser, you can open up article mode, it will strip off all the extra junk and you could read just the article in text format. 
I tried this out with my own blog. It looked really nice. It does remove all the images. And I think it did cut off part of the article, but I think for what it is, a web browser on your Kindle, it's pretty nice to have that feature, especially if you're a regular visitor of a blog of any kind. This is a great way to access it directly on your Kindle. Now going back to the home screen, the biggest controversial change that Amazon made with this update is this new home and library layout on the main screen. Let me explain what I mean. Previously, you had the ability to turn off this home screen view. When you update your Kindle, by default, you're gonna be on this home tab on the home screen. This will be showing you a bunch of recommendations for books you don't even own. Basically, it's Amazon trying to sell you new books that you may wanna buy in the future. Now for some people, you may not mind this, but for me personally, I very much appreciate my Kindle being a mindful device. I don't want these distractions of recommendations coming up on my screen all the time. So when I found out that they didn't allow you to turn this feature off, I was very, very terrified. And that's why I turned on airplane mode when I first heard about this update. But when I did more research, when I actually got the update on my Kindle, what I found out is you go to the library tab on the right side, it'll actually just stay there indefinitely. So you don't have to worry about that home tab ever coming up by default ever again. The library tab will show up and stay there fixed moving forward after you press that button. It is a bit annoying that the home tab will always be there. You can't get rid of it. I hope they add a button in the future where you can disable that home tab so it just goes away completely. But for right now, this is not the end of the world. You can still use your Kindle without recommendations by going to the library tab and the home tab will just be there on the side. In just a minute, I'll be talking about the new menus of the Kindle. That'll make more sense of what I mean when you can go back to the home screen without seeing that home tab. I'll explain that in one second. One thing I do want to mention as well while we're here though is in the middle between the home tab and the library tab you have this new button that shows your current book that you're reading. Now I have to say I think Amazon is copying Nook on this one. The Nook also has a button just like this in the middle of the screen where you can quickly press it and open up the book that you're currently reading. I think it's a great addition to the Kindle. I actually find myself using it quite often instead of going back to my home screen and going through all my books. The button right there will take me back to the last book I was reading. That's very, very helpful and convenient. One more point that I definitely want to address, and there's some confusion out there about special offers. When you buy your Kindle, you have the ability to pay $20 extra and remove the advertisements from the Kindle. Those are not the same thing as the recommendations on the home screen. Even if you pay that $20, you're still going to have that home tab on your screen that shows you all these recommendations. What that $20 does is it cleans up your screensaver and that will remain completely clean. So if you have a version of the Kindle without special offers, without advertisements, you will still have a clean screensaver without those advertisements showing up while your device is in sleep mode, but you will still have that home tab with recommendations on your Kindle. Those are two distinct features. They are not the same thing at all. Next up, I wanna talk about menus and navigation. There are some big updates here when it comes to navigating around your Kindle. The biggest one is Amazon removed the back button. This was my favorite feature in terms of navigation on the Kindle, and I'm surprised they actually got rid of it. Basically, prior to this update, if you wanted to go back one screen, you had this permanent back button on the top left of the screen. You just keep pressing that, and no matter where you are on the Kindle, it will just bring you back one step. And that was very convenient. If you ever get lost in the menus, you can always just keep going back. It would just bring you back one screen prior and you can back out your way to the home screen if you really had to. Now, however, they made it much more modern. Instead of a back button, we have an X on the top right of the screen. Say, for example, you open up your settings. Instead of going back to the home screen, you would press the X on the top right and that would X out of the settings. Say, for example, you open up Goodreads, same exact thing. You no longer go back to the home screen, you X out of Goodreads. This actually makes a lot more sense, and I do think this will be much easier for new Kindle users to understand compared to that back button. I don't know any other app or software that uses a back button like that. This is actually a very nice change. I do think it'll take some getting used to, but it does make a lot of sense, logically speaking. The other change when it comes to navigation and menus is actually when you're reading a book. When you open a book, you will notice the formatting options have moved around a little bit. Now you will see all the book options on the top right of the screen. 
these menus are basically the same as before, just the way you get to them have been moved to a new location. I think this is actually much easier and quicker to get to. Again, a very welcome change, just a convenient quality of life update there. Now one interesting thing I didn't notice as well is when you're in a book, this is the only place where you don't really X out of the book. This is the only area where you're gonna see that back button on the top left to bring you back home. And this is very interesting because it goes back to what I was saying before. As long as you pressed the library tab before opening the book, it'll bring you back into your library so you never actually have to see your home tab on the home screen. So even though the home tab is there, as long as you don't use it, you'll never have to see it, which is very nice. I just wish they would add the screen in the menu to change it so you can remove that home tab completely. But I guess you get some new updates here and they want you to have that option there all the time. You win some, you lose some. Those are all the changes Amazon has made in this new update. It will take a few weeks to roll out to everybody. So if you aren't seeing it yet, be a little patient. But if you don't wanna wait, you can go to the website linked in the description below, bring you to Amazon's direct website for downloading the update and installing it manually. That page will also show you if your Kindle even supports the update. If you're using an older Kindle, you may not be eligible for this software update. Overall, my thoughts about this update have changed quite a bit. I'm no longer terrified of it. I should also mention every software update has security updates, which are very, very important. So I would recommend do not avoid this update. I think it's worth it. I do think it will let you read on your Kindle the same way you were before with some new features. Yeah, that annoying home screen is there, but it's not the end of the world. Also, if you're watching this video, chances are you are an advanced Kindle user. I think you might like my other video about my Readwise integration that takes all my highlights and syncs them to my Evernote and Notion and my email so I can constantly review all my notes. Link for that video on the screen right now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.